What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, again, on the phone, we did get internet and we're starting to get everything in the house there. Um, just trying to get everything set up. Uh, I got camera batteries and all that charging. So for now, we're just gonna be using the phone. But we have the 92 here in the shop. As you guys know, we are fighting with a fuel leak. Um, that's not it, that's water, so don't worry about that. The fuel leak is those little droplets right over there. I believe they're coming off of, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but there's rubber lines right in there with the hose clamp that run from back here all the way up to the tank on the sending unit, which is right in here, right that way, but you guys get it. So I'm gonna climb underneath, see if I can find out where the back side of those lines are. Hopefully, we can get it fixed, get them changed, and then I'm gonna start driving this thing. Um, I was looking at HX35 turbos, so if you guys are interested in like this build at all, uh, be sure to let me know, because I was kind of building it, and then I kind of stopped, and then I started to build it again, and then, yeah. So, if you guys don't know the story on this truck, it's a 92, we bought it about four and a half, almost five years ago. Um, started restoring it, had the motor rebuilt. Um, four inch exhaust crossover, injectors, head studs, you name it, it's been done. Um, and it's slowly gone from there. We still have to finish up some things. I gotta put that front piece back in yet. Um, I need to do some front end work on it if I'm gonna keep it. Um, I'm gonna probably take the shocks off the 98, the rough country ones and throw them on here eventually. Um, I gotta do a CV axle boot down there. It came off. But yeah, just a bunch of small odd and end stuff. I'll probably do new upper and lower control arms, um, new sway bar end links and bushings. I think you can get a whole front end rebuild kit. I mean, like uh, ball joints, tie rods, the um, Dang it, sway bar end link, all that for like 150 bucks. So probably end up doing that, just to make sure this thing runs, actually rides really smooth. Uh, it is a one ton dually. So it's got the nice heavy duty leaf spring pack with the overload spring. Um, yeah, so other than that, that's, that's all I can really tell you about it. Um, upgrade all these to LEDs. The cab lights are LEDs, but the front lights aren't. So that's what cab lights look like. But I'd like to do LEDs. Those will obviously stay the amber on both sides. But then do LED turn signals, LED high and low beams, tail lights, obviously LED, LED there, are already upgraded. As you can tell, I do like those smoke that makes the truck look good. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that heavy duty bumper on there or if I'll throw a different bumper on here. Um, I mean, this thing does come in handy. It's it's nice. If I do, I'll probably take the step off and kind of rework it a little bit. But no, we're gonna see if we can find this fuel leak real quick. Um, I'll keep you guys updated, and I'll let you know what we come upon or find. So stay tuned. On those fuel lines that I've shown you guys, I can when I climb underneath there, they're literally right at the top of the transmission housing. So I think I'll be able to get to them fairly easy. Um, I'm also gonna be installing this gauge set over here, mainly just for the water temp, but I bought all three of these at Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks versus one gauge at O'Reilly for like, I think the one water temp gauge is like 20 bucks. Um, I actually have this same setup in the square body just mounted to the dash, so that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm not entirely sure where I'll be putting these three at, um, cause on the square body, I mounted them or Chad actually mounted them like right here. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Um, I don't know if I can mount them up top here or if I can just take that single water temp gauge out for now and just use it, but we'll figure something out. Yeah, the cluster's all messed up, so I need to have it rebuilt or try and rebuild it. But here is the sensor for the gauge. There's also one up next to the thermostat. Um, which is right here. I'm not sure exactly where that one sits at. It's somewhere over here. 
But the gauge, what the gauge reads off is right down here. It's right below, I'll say, um, injector return line number one um, on the driver's side. So we're gonna be probably just cutting this back um, as far as I can with good wire. We'll still be using the same plug, plug it, plugging it in, excuse me, and then just wiring our water temp gauge up right here to that over there. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and see what it looks like. Just gonna give you guys a quick update. So I was hoping I was gonna be, be able to use the same um, probe that came with the water temp gauge itself because it did come with one and it's over here, right here. I was hoping I was gonna be able to use this but it was a little long and then I didn't have the correct um, size fitting. It give you a little one and a big one. Obviously to screw together like that, like if you need a bigger one. But I was hoping I was gonna be able to use that in the factory location, but I couldn't. So all I did is I cut the wire like I was saying and then soldered it together, wrapped some electrical tape around it and then ran it into the cab. Um, we did obviously lose some coolant because um, I couldn't get a bucket or anything underneath there, but we actually had some there on hand and we have some more up there. Um, this is full strength, so I dumped some in and then added some water, put it in and we should be good to go. Um, I want to get this old radiator out just because it really needs to be flushed really well. Um, I have that three core up, sitting up there. I just need to get fittings for it. Um, get it put in here at some point just because I know it's going to help with the cooling aspect of it. But no, that's the factory probe there. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the gauges yet. Right now, it's just sitting down here on the floor. So I guess we'll start the old truck up and see what, if anything, works here. So. Let it run for a little bit and I'll come back and I'll show you guys what the gauge does. Well, I got some good news and I got some bad news, guys. The good news is that everything's hooked up. Bad news is we didn't get a reading. I don't know if that probe on the existing block in here is bad. The factory one there, I wish I could have used the other one. Um, I might just pick up a new um, probe there, slap it in there hook the cord back up and I was reading and I don't know if somebody would be able to tell me but I just followed the instructions to hook this thing up down here and then it says for illumination instructions for all gauges it says splice the wire blah 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 and then it says be sure that mounting panel is electrically grounded to the chassis of the car uh, gauge indicates and light read accurately so I don't know if the gauges it itself needs to be ground off um, they don't really tell you because obviously the water temp and the instructions for it, it doesn't say anything about grounding the actual water temp gauge off. But I went ahead and kind of like grounded it off um, just to see if that made a difference, but it didn't. So I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to do a little more research tonight, see if I can figure out um, if the whole panel itself needs to be grounded or... Like if that's the problem why it's not working or if it's the probe. My guess it's gonna be the probe because I wouldn't see why that one single wire because it's the copper wire that runs through and that's how you get your reading off of the gauge. But um, I'm not entirely sure so we'll figure that out. But I haven't decided where I'm gonna mount it. I might take the water temp gauge out and actually mount it up here with the boost gauge like a pillar gauge. Just do away with this one and just get the pillars. Um, because you can't really mount it anywhere. I thought about doing it like down here, but if you do that, you can't read it because the steering column's in the way. If you mount it up here on top of the dash, then you're gonna see the back side of your wires and everything. It's just not a good location. So I thought about doing it down there, but this really needs to be like bent back a little bit. It needs to be like almost like this to be able to read it. Because if you're just imagine driving and like I'll Obviously, this is my view right now, but if I look down, I mean, you can kind of read it, but they really need to be tilted back a little bit 
Um, I think, like I said, if they were kind of like in that location, that'd be way better. But we'll figure something out, guys. And if you guys like this build so far, um, we've obviously had the truck a while. I just haven't done much with it on camera. If you guys like it, be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification. Let's grow the channel. We're at almost 6,100 subscribers. Um, I love this thing. I think future plans, if we do keep the truck, HX35, get the new radiator thrown in here. Um, it's already got a four inch exhaust all the way back. We might do a little bit bigger tip on it. Um, obviously do some front end work like I was talking about. And uh, yeah. So that being said guys, be sure to smash that subscribe button, share the channel. Um, I'm the GM man. Remember learning as I do, doing love. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.